Hello, uh, my name is Goran Mekic, and I'm going to talk about uh, FreeBSD audio for professional and audio uh, and amateur uh, setups and equipment. Uh, it's basically mostly going to do with the non-audio uh, stuff, uh, basically going through the uh, the system and the components, how they all come together to give you a better audio experience. And the uh, agenda I'm gonna work, uh, I'm gonna talk about is, um, uh, first, virtual OSS is, uh, you can kind of say that, that it binds all together and makes uh, advanced hardware less advanced for the, uh, um, applications, uh, it does some routing, it does a lot of things. Uh, Jack2 as one of the audio servers, but it's a, it's a special one because it's designed to be run in a studio. There are some other uh, audio servers that I'm gonna briefly talk about and how they correlate to the, to the applications and to the environment. Uh, there is this mystical thing called, called real-time uh, that got really better uh, over the, the, the time in FreeBSD and uh, uh, how to actually tune your FreeBSD for more real-timeness and a better response, faster response from the, your audio device. Uh, I have some uh, wishes for the future, but we will see uh, what the future brings. So virtual OSS is um, uh, written by Hans-Peter Selaski. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a really amazing software that extends the capability of a built-in OSS, kernel OSS. Uh, and it can do stuff like a uh, big number of channels uh, being more than eight. Uh, probably, uh, not probably, but um, mixing and resampling is faster in uh, user space. So if you have a big number of channels, uh, like I have 18, I know that Hans has 32 and it gets uh, sluggish if the kernel does it, so the virtual OSS helps with that. Uh, combining and splitting is a um, weird concept of if you have, let me talk about combining first. Uh, what I mean by combining today, uh, you can easily find a hardware that has for example, a USB microphone and Bluetooth headphones. So you kind of have to combine them into one, uh, uh, one audio interface, virtual interface that application know how to talk to and communicate with it. Uh, that's where the, the virtual OSS really shines uh, with, uh, uh, how to say, consumer electronics. And uh, splitting, if you have something like uh, 18 channels of audio that I have back at home, uh, and you say to, for example, Chromium, okay, deal with this, weird stuff might, might happen. And uh, usually applications that are not specifically for audio are not gonna handle weird number of channels in a right way. So, Having uh, uh, ability to split a chord into two, uh, maybe clone them would be better uh, uh, term, uh, gives you ability to have one huge chord uh, represented in one stereo device and one device with the rest of the channels. Uh, that way your Firefox, your Chromium, whatever the, the common application that uses audio won't get confused. And uh, it's beautiful that virtual OSS can create a slash dev slash DSP, which is a default audio device. 
So all your applications don't have to deal with the whatever they find weird in audio sense. Uh, yeah, and it can also resample and uh, adjust the audio so your application doesn't have to know about that. Uh, usually you don't want that in a studio, but you want that in a, on your laptop or some consumer uh, device. Uh, when I say routing and utilities, uh, the, there is, whenever you have a system that has uh, multiple channels or multiple, let's call them peer-to-peer, -peer, routing becomes important. Network is the obvious uh, example of that. But if you imagine 32 channels or even 64, then what goes where is really important because sometimes you don't want all your channels to go to the main mix. Sometimes you want to listen to something in the monitor but not go to the, to the PA. And the routing in uh, virtual OSS uh, enables you to <clears throat> to achieve a certain flexibility with which channel goes to which output and, and stuff like that. And when I say utilities, uh, there is built-in uh, equalizer, there is a, a compression almost by default because sometimes you're gonna have like two programs uh, output their audio and it would normally clip uh, you, you would just cut off uh, if it's too loud, but the, the virtual OSS has a compression, so it, it gradually uh, lowers down the, the volume of the output. And if it's too loud, it's just gonna hard clip it anyway, uh, just to, to protect the device. Uh, there is a really weird consequence of not having your device turned on uh, while your virtual OSS is working because no uh, callback is going to be called, audio callback. All your videos are just gonna stand there. They're not stuck, they're just waiting for the callback that never arrives. So the consequence of that is that if I don't turn up my, uh, um, my mixer, which is also a USB audio device, uh, all my ads are just stuck. So it kind of is funny that virtual OSS is an ad removal thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a funny coincidence. Oops, sorry. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it enables us easier development. Uh, one of the features virtual OSS has is a dummy device. So it doesn't have to be connected to any hardware uh, you just uh, create a dummy device and you use it, for example, in your audio tests, so you don't listen to all the crappy noise that, that, that would otherwise go to your speakers, and you can have end-to-end -end tests and uh, really be, well, more sure that your application is working. Uh, as I mentioned, Jack, too, is... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, well, there was a, a Jack 1 before. Uh, I think this year we got Jack 2. Uh, Jack 2 is, uh, well, more actively we uh, maintained uh, Jack implementation. And it started by uh, somebody wrote a, a problem report on Bugzilla saying, hey, Midnight BSD has in their imports uh, Jack 2, and I was very interested in that because I am following the, the Jack uh, development even before I uh, switched to FreeBSD, and uh, <clears throat> I was really interested in that. I found a patch, I updated to the uh, current version, it just compiled and worked on my machine, but uh, Florian Volpen actually did the proper uh, porting, balancing of buffers, and really, really good implementation was done by Florian. I just made it compile. Uh, but I was happy with it uh, for a while. Uh, the 
One thing that, I'm, I'm gonna return to that, one, one thing that Jack knows f uh, since it was conceived is a real time. Uh, I'm gonna explain what real time means for audio in, in just a second, but uh, Jack always knew what real time is and used it on Linux because it was conceived in Linux. Uh, and it had problems with uh, uh, FreeBSD, not in the implementation. The implementation was good, but the user, non-root user, couldn't uh, use the real-time priority for its threads. So th that was kind of in the limbo. It, it kind of works, but not, and uh, it, it was weird. And uh, <clears throat> it's intended for studio. The Florian really did a good job there. Uh, it runs on a weird hardware, 24 bits, uh, which is weird because it's three bytes data, and uh, uh, it really shines in the studio. You can, of course, use it in a consumer, uh, like laptops or whatever you, you want to use it. It's just not that it's going to bring something to you uh, on... Uh, um, if it's not in the studio. Uh, and that's why, uh, although it's an uh, uh, audio server, I mention it separately because its intention is different from the others. And the others are Pulse Audio, SNDIO, and ALSA. Uh, they, can all, uh, they all have a backend for OSS so they can either use virtual OSS or your OSS device in kernel, uh, depending on what you want and what you have. And uh, all of them are supported. And when I say portable audio development, you can do <clears throat> uh, stuff like, for example, you can create a jail, you can create, a, sorry, first you can create a dummy device with virtual OSS uh, through DevFS, you can assign it to a certain uh, jail, and you can have your development in the jail. You don't have to use the jail, but it's a possibility if you want it. And all of those uh, audio servers are also working uh, with uh, either virtual OSS or in-kernel implementation. So. FreeBSD gives you ability to, if you're a DSP developer or audio developer, it gives you a really nice ability to be portable and to be nice to other operating system and support them. Although you've never seen, for example, SNDIO on OpenBSD, you can still develop for it and, well, be nice to OpenBSD. Uh, real time, um, it's, uh, it's a really weird concept because it depends on the, where are you defining it. Uh, for example, web sockets are considered to be real-time communication, but they can have like, I don't know, 300 millisecond delay, or maybe even more, depends on where your server and clients are. Uh, so definition of real-time really depends on where you use it. And in, in the industry uh, embedded devices, real time is like, give me now, don't be late, even one millisecond if it's possible, but don't be late at all, right? Uh, for audio, it's impossible to achieve that. Uh, the different components are going to have different delays, like uh, your, um, Analog to digital converter is gonna have a small buffer. Uh, DA uh, converter is also gonna have a buffer. You're gonna have a buffer in the, for example, Jack or your application. Maybe your application uses OSS directly. Uh, so there are always small buffers that are gonna add up. So in audio uh, world, real time is usually five to six milliseconds, totally uh, like a, a round trip. And if you have six milliseconds, that's okay. Uh, I mean, okay in a sense that if I plug my guitar, for example, I don't get boom. 
Right, it's really hard to, to, to uh, play if, you, if something is uh, lagging too much. Uh, so uh, too much in an audio sense over six milliseconds. Uh, real time in FreeBSD is not a new thing. Um, it always was there, or at least uh, since I use it, it was always there. But non-root users couldn't uh, use it. So uh, Hans and Florian wrote a patch uh, for the Mac framework that allows uh, real-time group users to utilize real-time uh, scheduler. Uh, so it's not that real-time needed to be bundled in the kernel, it was already there, just the permissions were wrong in the audio sense. And uh, why it's important, well, uh, you can have, for example, uh, playback, and your playback is, let's say, a second late, but if all playback is exactly one second late, you don't care about that because the, the, the music is just fine. Uh, but if you're playing, uh, you really want it to be fast and uh, to get the feedback right away, if it's possible. And uh, uh, one thing that you want to avoid is called the jitters. That's if uh, there is absolutely no real-time implementation and your system is under a load for whatever reason your audio can be late and your sine wave can distort or whatever uh, you're playing can distort because the sample is not here but here in a, in a uh, time-wise uh, scale. So it's going to play too late and your, your uh, signal is going to distort. Now, if you have only one system that it is towards it, you're probably not going to hear it because human ear cannot hear distortion under 3%. Uh, but if you chain that up, uh, for example, a few devices, like we have uh, some, some chain here, it can add up and you can really get lousy audio at uh, output and you don't want that. And it's beautiful that even applications without uh, real-time support can utilize real-time. It's a weird concept that I only encounter in FreeBSD, but uh, I'm only using FreeBSD, some other operating system might have that. Uh, I'm just not, not familiar with it. Uh, this is... All you need to, to enable your user to utilize real time, well, uh, log out and log in and to, to actually make it active, uh, but that's it. And this became, uh, uh, th this got into the generic kernel in 13.1. So before that, there is, uh, uh, I think there is a port that Florian made for older uh, uh, versions, but I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't use it, so I'm not going to talk about it much. And then Audacious is my favorite audio player, but you can swap in whatever command you, you want in here. And uh, what this does is Artiprio uh, is going to run Audacious with a runtime priority of 20. Uh, um, Real-time priority is like a nice. Uh, so it has a, a, a range of real-time priorities. 20 is, I think, the, the least prioritized one. And then if your system, for example, is building something and all your cores are busy, you can uh, still have non-choppy audio playing and it's all nice and I actually use it on a daily basis uh, on uh, something that is really old hardware, 11 years old i, uh, i5 with 8 gigs of RAM, so literally nothing special. You could probably achieve the same uh, goal differently 
maybe by um, CPU pinning or some other, uh, some other technique. But Audacious on, that, on the mention system takes about 0.13 of load. And having it sit on a CPU is kind of overkill. So th this works really nicely uh, for the past, well, whenever the 13.1 came out, it was beginner, beginning of summer. And there are a few tunables that you're probably gonna want to have in a, a real-time setting. Uh, this is totally unimportant for the consumer devices. Uh, but it kind of gives you better uh, work environment uh, in the studio. This here is, uh, <clears throat> it goes from zero to I think 100. And it's uh, uh, the way I understood it because I'm not kernel developer and I just try to understand stuff the best I can. Uh, when IRQ uh, appears, uh, if you don't have the, the deviation set to zero, it's gonna wait a bit, uh, so it's gonna handle all the RQs that accumulated over time in a batch. But you don't want that in a real-time uh, scenario. You want, okay, there's an IRQ, go for it, do something right away. So this gave us a problem. Uh, when I say us, I mean uh, I'm also contributor to a drum sampling software called uh, Drum Gizmo, and tests were failing because it was too late. The, the test detected that the audio is always too late. So it took us about, uh, I think, four months to find that this actually exists. And I think uh, this speeds up audio more than anything else on a non-fully loaded system. If it's a, uh, the high load system, then real time is gonna give you the best results. Uh, USB, as any device, has a buffer. And the, the lowest setting currently is two milliseconds of buffer. So to achieve real time, uh, the rest of your system has to do its stuff in four milliseconds. <clears throat> uh, it's possible, whoops, sorry. It's possible, but uh, it's kind of limiting, so um, uh, you have to tweak more stuff than, than just this. And I've been talking to Hans to lower this to a one millisecond because Maybe my hardware cannot deal with that. Maybe his cannot uh, deal with that. But who knows what the future holds? And maybe we are going to have devices that can do one millisecond of buffer. So probably this is going to be lowered to one, um, maybe some distant future, even sub millisecond. But we are going to see when we get there. Uh, this actually has nothing to do with uh, uh, studio uh, environment. It's actually if your uh, application doesn't know how to handle buffers with OSS and uh, configure the device properly, you're gonna say, okay, this is the lowest latency, I mean, not zero, but a zero denotes the, uh, give me the smallest possible buffer that is possible. I cannot tell you, how big that buffer is because it depends on a uh, 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 number of channels, number of beats in, in a sample and so on. But this is gonna give you the, the shortest one. So for example, if you use MPV, uh, it's gonna get the, the shortest buffer and be real time as much as possible for an application unaware of the real time. And uh, this, I'm not sure you should use this uh, because sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. Uh, Beat Perfect is gonna say, okay, whatever stream I get, I'm just gonna spew it out to the output 
and not do any kind of processing, any kind of sample rate conversion or whatever. Uh, that means that all your audio applications have to deal with the uh, fact that only one sampler rate and bit depth is supported, uh, although your device can, can probably do more, but not at the same time. And there are devices that can do sample rate conversion uh, and whatever conversion is needed in the hardware so they are faster and you get faster responses. Uh, luckily, I, I had no idea that such devices exist, but Tommy Pernilla was nice enough to tell me, okay, I have one, so you can use that. And, uh, I personally don't because my device doesn't handle resampling and uh, adjusting of the audio. Uh, but yeah, if you use, for example, Jack, uh, it knows how to resample and, and do all the, the conversion that's needed. So that's gonna speed it up a bit uh, by not needing any, uh, uh, any more uh, sampling any more uh, uh, processing. And the future is, uh, future is bright, actually. Uh, Why well, I say that, um, um, the reason I switched to, to FreeBSD in 2016, uh, well, there are two reasons. First, I come from Serbia, and in 2016, EuroBSD was in Belgrade. So I was... <laughs> I was kind of embarrassed to go with a laptop that is not on the BSD, and uh, I tried it uh, before the conference, and it, it was great. Uh, the second reason is um, I had a Dimension desktop back then, and it has a hard drive and SSD. SSD was with Linux, and the hard drive uh, was for whatever I'm experimenting at the moment. Uh, and I experimented at that moment with the FreeBSD. And even with a slower drive, the FreeBSD gave me less jitters. Uh, I don't know why, maybe it's my setup, maybe I did something wrong on Linux. So I don't wanna blame the Linux for being worse. It's just, that's what made me switch to FreeBSD in the studio. and. Uh, so the future, even the past is bright, well, but the future is even better because we have all this support, everything that Linux have uh, software-wise, or most of it, compiles on FreeBSD and you can use it like, I don't know, effects and synths and whatever you, you desire. Uh, so what we need now is more docs and examples. Uh, I started learning about uh, DSP and audio development a few years ago, and uh, this year I wrote my first example that, that is like a full example of audio. So it's really hard to start. There is no documentation, and it's not only FreeBSD. Pick any operating system, and it's really hard to start with audio. Just playing the... the I don't know, wave file, that's one level of a problem, but really dealing with the buffers and uh, sample rates and doing properly in an audio studio sense, that's really hard to find. Uh, so the documentation is growing. Uh, I'm striving to write the examples of audio uh, scenarios. And today we have just one basic example of audio in a user share examples sound. Uh, but there is a MIDI in review and uh, there is going to be a combining of MIDI and audio uh, through polling and select, which is what you probably want in your studio, MIDI for control and audio for the, the well, hearing. Uh, so we really need more of those and uh, better ones. When I say more ports, uh, it's, it's not that we don't have enough ports, but the audio ecosystem recently is really growing. Uh, I'm really happy to say that 
open source audio is starting to shine and to do what proprietary software can do. Uh, not in all regards, unfortunately, and we are not ready yet to, to switch uh, proprietary solutions with open source ones, but we are really, really close. There is, there is a really small window uh, that, that needs to fill in with, uh, with the ports and uh, uh, Linux normally has more audio developers than FreeBSD, so we need porting uh, to be done to, to catch. Uh, there, is, whoops, sorry. there is some optimization that can be done. Uh, maybe. Uh, I talked to Hans uh, on, in a lobby and we said, okay, how about we profile stuff? And one of two things is going to happen. Either FreeBSD is so perfectly implemented, uh, has so perfectly implemented audio that nothing can be done. But then it will the profiling will be like a hard, uh, the, the tangible proof of that. I kind of suspect that's not the case, but we're going to see. The second thing that can happen, okay, FreeBSD is not the most optimal uh, that it can be, and we can make it better, and profiling is probably going to show us with flame graphs where we are losing time. And... Uh, the, the, that's the easy part with optimization. The hard part is what if we need, um, I don't know, for example, different structure. There is no profiler that's going to tell uh, tells us, okay, maybe you need to align these variables better so it's going to be better uh, and so on. So it needs to be done by somebody who is... Uh, really into it and understand it. Uh, currently, I'm afraid I'm not the one, but I would like to learn it and to, to contribute in, in, such a, in such a way. And there is a really new concept, well, you know, a few years uh, for audio that is like a few decades old. This is new. Uh, those are uh, network-based mixers, so they don't have any audio ports for input, just for output, and everything is done uh, over the network. Maybe that's the future, maybe we decide as an audio community that that doesn't really work well. Uh, but I would really like to have a driver for such a mixer. Uh, they are out there in the, in the uh, market, you can purchase one and uh, uh, kind of have the, the uh, early introduction to them because I don't think they are uh, common enough to be uh, as stable as they can be. Uh, because, for example, what happens if I don't run a dedicated network just for audio? And if I do run a dedicated network for audio, does it mean that all my machines have to have uh, two uh, Ethernet cards? Or so it's new and a bit of uncharted, but it's there, and I think it's a great concept. And uh, speeds of uh, uh, gigabit uh, gives us nice ability to be real time. And in the future, maybe 10 gigabits are going to be uh, so fast and efficient that normal audio mixers are going to be replaced. Who knows? We're going to see how, how all that happens. And I would like to thank a f uh, quite a few people uh, that brought us here. Uh, as you might have heard, I am... Uh, presenting other people's work. Uh, I had really little to do with the implementation of this, more with the documentation. Hans-Peter Selaski is the, the first one. His amazing developer helped me so many times, answers all the questions, and uh, 
I'm already embarrassed to, to ask a next one, and uh, I guess he's gonna say once, okay, can you even read the code? Come on, try it, man. <laughs> but yeah, you're amazingly patient, and thank you. Uh, Florian is another developer who, who gave endless stream of answers how advanced audio works. Uh, because it's complicated. Uh, it sounds simple, but uh, to, to a newcomer that I was, and then I discovered, oh my God, what, what have I gone into? This is so complicated, and uh, uh, I mean, there is no debugger for audio, because uh, either you're not gonna get a sound, you're gonna get a proper sound, or you get <laughs> So there is no debugger to tell you what the third one is doing wrong. You, you have to stare at the code and see that you're off by one or something similar. That I created all kinds of uh, errors before I started programming for this particular reason. Uh, if the error occurs, I want to be able to recognize it and not see it the first time that, that it occurs. So I try to make all the errors I can in order to prepare myself how to, to recognize that error. Uh, Yuri Viktorovich is a <clears throat> few years port committer and he's already second on the list of uh, um, Communers who have a high number of ports. Uh, now, for some reason, he is interested in audio, but not so much in, a, uh, in a studio equipment. If I remember correctly, uh, talking to him, he's interested in measuring. So there's tons of ports that he did, and so thank you, Yuri. Uh, it's it's wonderful. And all the LV2 developers, LV2 stands for uh, LATSPA version 2, which is a framework and libraries for developing plugins and digital audio workstations and hosts for those plugins and, and stuff so that you can have delays, flangers, and whatever you want. Uh, and they're mostly, oh, <laughs> mostly, I don't know any BSD developer that's uh, developing LV2 uh, as, a, as a framework. So most of those people are Linux uh, developers. So we are borrowing from them and thank you developers. It, it's, been, uh, it's been a pleasure to, to do that, uh, to, to extend where the, uh, to go where no LV2 has gone before. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> they told me every presentation should end with a cat, and this is my special reviewer. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but he's actually looking at the code. He's staring at it. He's never sleeping when, when, when he's staring, uh, when we do this. Uh, so, uh, he's a fearsome reviewer, and I still have a mark from a, two-week uh, old review that he left on my thumb. Uh, and unfortunately, it was his last review because we have to, uh, he passed away a week and a half ago on Wednesday. So I am sure my uh, contributions to the audio and freebies, they are never gonna be the same. Uh, this little fellow helped me that, with that. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. These are my contacts. And if you want, presentation is the, the last one. Uh, for the reasons of uh, LibreOffice breaking last week for me, I couldn't uh, use it to, to create a spreadsheet. So now everything is in LaTeX, and you will need that to build a PDF uh, so you can view it. But from now on, it's everything going to be uh, in LaTeX for me, and most of my work and research is in audio, so if you're interested, bookmark it or whatever. Thank you.
Any questions? Sorry, can you help me with the mask? I have a problem understanding. Uh, most of the jack, um, oh yeah, uh, the person is maintaining jack two port in OpenBSD, so uh, they're interested if it can be upstreamed, if I understood well. Uh, there is, uh, I don't know how it's pronounced, Falk T X, uh, the the person who is uh, mo uh, the main developer behind the jack two. And uh, uh, on FreeBSD, it's a Florian. So uh, the, the IRC channel jack on uh, Libera chat is where most of the communication is going on. I know for a fact that uh, uh, FalkTX is on Mastodon also, but I don't know what are the preferences, and maybe IRC is the best because it's a real time. Again, within its own context. So, sorry, can, can you remove the mask for the question? Okay, so, so the, well, it's not a question, it's a remark. Uh, audio over network is already established in the uh, live streaming uh, and uh, well, live venues, so uh, I need to update myself. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I can't say mine, right? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I like bands that are in between, like in between rock and metal. So Godsmack, uh, uh, Volbeat, uh, Clutch, uh, something like that. Uh, rock and something else, either rock and metal rock and blues, and, but rock is the, the, the foundation. Okay.